So um, we just I just showed a uh, example of the de Broglie wavelength. Um, so that uh, we really have only three more years to go uh, for, before uh, quantum mechanics is invented. Um, all right, and so uh, it was discovered by a, a guy named Schrodinger, and at the same time, it's actually discovered by another guy named Heisenberg. Um, Heisenberg used uh, what's called matrix mechanics. Um, Schrodinger used the old-fashioned uh, system of differential equations that physicists were already used to. Um, any, at any rate, uh, let's take a look. Um, so so, so th this is basically the difference. Uh, remember, the Bohr model can only explain um, what we observe from, from hydrogen, the spectrum of hydrogen. Um, what, what quantum mechanics does, or sometimes called wave mechanics, is it explains the entire periodic table. And, uh, and, and even molecules, we can even uh, explain molecules that way as well. Uh, there are four um, numbers that we're going to talk about briefly. Uh, but in, and also, of course, this leads to our understanding of chemistry. I mean, this is, you know, quantum mechanics is a fundamental understanding of, of, uh, of how um, atoms work. And uh, so the, the first one is, um, well, I, yeah, let, let me just, let me just, talk about what quantum mechanics is instead of because um, we're not really going to use the quantum numbers other than the one that we've already talked about which is um, the the, uh, the the sometimes called the principal quantum number or the energy quantum number um, so, so it turns out that uh, what quantum quantum mechanics does something very different than anything in mechanics or anything in electricity and magnetism what it does is it gives us um, what's called a wave function. Okay, so it's, and what the wave function is is it gives us the probability of finding the electron in certain um, locations around the uh, around the nucleus. Um, so we don't think of the electron as as being in orbit anymore. Sometimes these are called orbitals. That's fine too. Um, all right, and so uh, here are here are four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number is the energy quantum number. Um, then uh, there is another one called the the angular momentum quantum number. Um, and in old notation, it got these uh, letters S, P, D, and F. Uh, that's as far as it goes. Actually, um, there's also a magnetic quantum number, and there's a spin either spin up or spin down um, and this explains basically the shape of the periodic table all these all these four things uh, explain that so um, uh, the orbitals these notice now they're called orbitals uh, which are or which are associated with this angular momentum quantum number um, we're just going to need to remember S P D and F but they form different shapes shapes of probability of finding the electron. Um, the p orbital has three orientations, one along the x-axis, one along the y-axis, and one along the z-axis because these are three-dimensional. It actually gets very complicated um, when, the, when we start looking at atoms uh, pretty deep into the periodic table, but we're, we don't need to do that. All we're going to do is uh, just use s, p, d, and f, and um, there's the different orientations. Uh, spin up and spin down. Okay, so, um, all right, let's see. Let's get to, uh, so this is what's called electron configurations. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how this works. Um, this gives us the chemical properties uh, which are determined by these electron configurations or the electron structure. So we're going to take a quick look at that. Um, so this is this is uh, you, you need to remember these or you know write this down that uh, s s orbitals or s shells uh, take two electrons p's take uh, six electrons d's take ten and f's take fourteen okay so um, so just just write those down uh, you we'll probably will never get to f 
because they're, they're that's too deep into the periodic table. Um, you know, S, P, and D are pretty pretty sufficient. Um, let's take a look at strontium here and see how this works. Okay, so it's pretty it's actually pretty simple. So you write this triangle or ha I guess half triangle where you start with one S and then you go 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, and then um, 4s, 4p, 4d, and then 4f, and then you just keep repeating 5 uh, s, p, d, and f, and then 6 s, p, d, and f, and 7 s, p, d, and f. Um, this is really, the, the sevens are down towards the bottom of the periodic table, so um, the main thing about this, this, this kind of half triangle, notice the shape of it, is this um, this shape, or you, you can just copy this and and use it during the test or use it during the the um, the homework questions. This is also in your textbook. Um, this is the order in which um, the shells get filled. So the one s shell gets filled first. It'll take up to two electrons. So this is either hydrogen or helium, and then you get to, you go to the next row of the periodic table, and then you start with the two s's. Okay, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about um, when we, when we uh, start doing this. All right, so strontium, I don't know how helpful this is. Um, strontium has 38 electrons, so you have to account for all the electrons. So, you, so notice the 1S comes first, and they, you put how many electrons are in there. It, this is actually really not complicated at all. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. It's kind of like keeping track of your bank account. You know, you have 38 electrons, where do they all go? Okay, so two of them go here, and then what's the next? The next shell to get filled is, this loops around by the way, the next shell to get filled is the 2s. Well, s's can only take two, and then the next one that gets filled is the 2p. Well, p's can take six, and now we're, you know, two plus two plus six, we've taken up uh, a ten of those electrons. And then after the 2p comes the 3s, see that's the order, so s's take 2, then the 3p, and then the 4s. So um, I like to take these in groups of 10, so, so the, the, the 3s, the 3p, and the 4s. Um, so notice there's 2, there's 6, and there's another 2. So, so, so that they've, that's taken up another um, 10. So you know, we're, we're down, uh, the first 10 were we were down to 28, the next 10 we're down to 18. So, so we've taken care of 18 electrons up to this point, up to the 4s. But notice what happens after the 4s. So you, you curl around, you loop around here, and then you get to a d, a d orbital, or a d shell. And d's can take 10, so the 3d gets filled because, you know, you're at 18, 10 of them go in and you only have um, uh, you only have, uh, um, let's see, uh, eight, you know, eight more to go, right? So the ten, so there, there's the three D that that fills up with ten, and then the next one is the the four P. So you have eight to give, um, and and uh, only six can go in the P's, right? Um, and then the next one is a is is a five S. So that's the order. That that's the trick is is just knowing the order. I'll, I'll let's do another example. I'll I'll do an example with you. All right. So here we go. Here's here's our example. So you start with the one s. All right, and then the two s, and the two uh, p. All right, and then the three s, and then the three p. This is a p, three p, and then the three d and then the 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. And, th and that's really it. Uh, I mean, not, not the whole thing. You could, you could have a row 5 and row 6, but they only go out to f, okay? So, um, so this is the order that they, this is what I'm talking about. So you start with the 1s. You always start with the 1s. Then you loop around, and the next thing is the next shell to be filled is the 2s and then you loop around the next shell to be filled is the 2p and then you loop around and the next shell to be filled 
you know, after the 2P is the 3S, and then comes the 3P, and then the 4S, and then the next shell to be filled will be after the 4S is the 3D, and then comes the 4P, and then I didn't write it, but the, you know, the 5, 5S after that. Okay, so after the 5. So, so it's, it's kind of a diag diag <laughs> sorry, diagonal <laughs> uh, filling of these things. Um, so here, let's, let's do a simple one. Um, how about, uh, i got to have a little bit of room. Um, so let's say uh, carbon. All right, well, carbon has uh, six electrons, right, because it has six protons. We're just talking about neutral carbon here. All right, so I start... So here's my electron configuration. I always start with this first one, 1s. One all right, and carbon has six electrons, so two of them will go there. There's so one s, and there's a superscripted two. So now I'm down to four more electrons. All right, and then the next one is the two s. Right, so there's a two s, and s's can only take two. And then after the 2s, you follow this around, and it goes to the 2p. So the 2p, oh, we're, we're down to just two electrons left, right? Because, uh, you know, two of them went to the 2s. And then the 2p, well, there's only uh, these two electrons left, so the 2 will go there. And so the 1s, 1s2, this is the way you read it, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That is the electron configuration for neutral carbon. All right, um, it, this, it's really not hard um, when you do when you do a couple of these here. Let's do um, uh, here. Um, let me think. What would be a good one to do? Uh, hold on. All right, I decided to do potassium, which has the chemical symbol K. And uh, potassium has 19 electrons. All right, so let's do the the, the electron configuration for potassium. And um, the, here's the way it works. Okay, so uh, you know it's exactly the same as before. 1s, there's two of them, and then the 2s, there's two more, and then the 2p. I guess I shouldn't write this so big. The 2p and the p can take six. What I like about those first three and the next three is that they take three, they take uh, ten, 10 at a time, right? Because uh, 2 plus 2 plus 6, and then 2 plus 6 plus 2. All right, and, and that kind of shows you, so, so, so after the 2p um, comes the 3s, all right? So it's going to be a 3s, and there's going to be 2, and then um, after the 3s, you remember, just, just look at this triangle, uh, the 3s you loops around and there's the 3p and then the 4s the 3p and then the, the which can take six and then the the 4s is next and so let's count okay so we had um, just to keep track of it we had uh, 2 plus 2 plus 6 so we're down to 9 right so there's there's nine electrons to take care of um, and then we then the 3s and the 3p uh, take eight, so then we're down to just one electron, and that's going to go right here. All right, so the 4s one, so that uh, let me let me read it fully. So the electron configuration for for neutral potassium would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p. 6, 4, S, 1. So you just, you just follow this, um, you know, this diagonal, and uh, you really can't go wrong. All right, it's, it's um, just do some practice. There's some answers in the back, and uh, 